Hi, I'm Mike Bloom, and this is part six of a discussion of end-time Bible prophecy, exposing the errors of dispensationalism and futurism. And last lesson, we talked about the mark of the beast. And we showed you that there's a pattern with Moses and Israel with the law of God and the golden calf or the image of the beast, with Moses uh, calling people to stand on, with him who are on God's side and others being slain or fallen, fallen rather, be, who worship the image of the beast. So I'm going to show you another pattern. But before I do that, let me just say this. The Bible speaks about buying or selling. And it mentions you have to have this mark in order to buy or sell. Well, Jesus in Revelation chapter 3 said, Buy of me gold tried in the fire, white raiment, and eye salve. And he's obviously not talking about literal physical gold and white clothing and so forth. White linen is the righteousness of the saints. It's a symbol. Gold tried in the fire, our Bible, the Bible says our faith is to be tried like gold in the fire. And eye salve, uh, salve or anointing, represents an impression or influence of God so that you can see and understand things properly. The Bible speaks of the eyes of our understanding. And so Revelation is using biblical sim uh, symbolism and imagery from front to back. In fact, you don't have to go outside the Bible to understand what these symbols are and to interpret them. Go to the rest of the Bible. What makes more sense to you? Having all the symbols explained in the Bible or us having to search through the National Enquirer or other newspapers in order to find out what the Bible symbols are really meaning. Go to the rest of the Bible every time. It's there somewhere. And not only that, but the word mark in Revelation concerning the mark of the beast in the Greek language means an engraving or an etching. Isn't it interesting that we've seen the image of the beast, the forehead, and the right hand all associated with Deuteronomy chapter 6 and the law of God which should be bound to the forehead or frontlets between the eyes and to the hand. But now we see that the Ten Commandments were engraved or etched in stone. And that's the mark or engraving that we read about in Revelation 13 of the beast, Satan's answer to God's law. This is simply saying people are either going to be committed to the kingdom of God or they're going to be committed to the kingdom of the devil. And in Revelation 14, you see the standoff. People stood with the Lamb on Mount Zion with the Father's name in their foreheads. And now I want to show you in Matthew chapter 7 another great strong parallel between uh, the mark of the beast and what the rest of the Bible says. In Matthew 7 and 21, Jesus makes a statement, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now notice in Revelation 14, immediately after it speaks about the mark of the beast, there's 144,000 with their father's name in their foreheads. Now the forehead, we already said, represents the soul, the intellect, the mind, and will. And so what better picture of representing doing the father's will than having the father's name written on the forehead in the book of Revelation? Jesus said the ones that go into the kingdom of God do the will of the Father. But it doesn't stop there. In verse 24, Jesus said, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, <clears throat> which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Well, the 144,000 not only have their father's name on their foreheads, but they're standing on Mount Zion, a rock, with the Lamb. Now, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the Lamb. God the Father is the Father. So here you see the same thing Jesus is saying in Revelation, only symbolically put in Revelation. 144,000 standing with the Lamb, Jesus, on the rock, Mount Zion, with their Father's name on their foreheads. They do the will of the Father. But what's it say after this? The, uh, Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. And so, well, you've got 144,000 standing on a rock or a mountain, and it specifically says stood with the Lamb, then you've got a house built on sand that falls. And in Revelation 14 and 8, John heard an angel say, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. 
And so you see the exact picture of what Jesus said in symbolic form concerning the mark of the beast and the name of the Father on the forehead. Stay away from pop prophecy literature. They're making millions of dollars from movies, sensationalizing these scriptures, when really they're biblical symbols that people aren't aware are interpreted in the rest of the Bible, and duping millions and millions of believers. Folks, the Bible itself explains these things. And when you go to the rest of the Bible, search out what these things mean. God will bless you and He will open up your eyes as to what the truth is really saying. I've just introduced the issue of that great city, Babylon, in Revelation 14 and 8. Lesson 7 is going to identify this great city, Babylon, according to the rest of the Bible. So let's stick with the word. God bless you. Stay posted for our next lesson.